Hi students, this is a general video on how to take advantage of some of the features of my math lab. Okay, I'm just going to go to a problem in my pre-calculus course. Uh, we have a homework here, um, but the, you're going to be able to use these tools in any course, not just in a pre-calculus course. Uh, but <clears throat> if you look on the screen here, you can see it says, uh, for this problem, divide and express the result in standard form. And here they want us to do 6 divided by 3 minus i. Now, if you watch my lectures, generally you're prepared for most of the problems, but sometimes there might be problems that you aren't prepared for, or ones where you just need some extra help. So let's say, for example, that we weren't, we aren't really sure how to do this one, and we didn't get enough out of the lecture that we're not sure how to divide exactly. So let's say we just try putting in some answer. Well, 6 divided by 3 minus i, well, 6 divided by 3 is 2. You can type in any answer you want. Type in 2 and then go down on the um, go down on the bottom right corner and click uh, check answer. Now my math lab gives you immediate feedback. Here it says remember to multiply by the conjugate, the complex conjugate. Express your answer in standard form. So now you can take advantage of what they're saying here, but they don't really say a lot right there. So what do you do? Well, you're not sure how to divide, um, but you still want to do your homework. Well, there's actually a couple of really nice tools in my math lab. So let's take a look at them. So up here in the top right corner where it says question help, you want to go ahead and click on that. <clears throat> and there's two options here. There's one that says help me solve this. And the second one is view an example. There's other things down here too as well, like the textbook and videos. But most students find, uh, of all these options, most students find either view an example or help me solve this to be the best. I personally recommend view an example because with view an example, it gives you a similar problem, but with different numbers. So for example, here we're dividing six divided by three minus i. Well, if I do view an example, it's going to give me a similar problem, but not exactly the same. It's just kind of a similar setup. Here they want us to divide 10 divided by 4 minus i. So different numbers, but the same basic kind of problem. And then uh, you'll see on the bottom left corner here in this box, it says five parts remaining. <clears throat> and it actually shows you each individual step. Like right here, they talk about the complex conjugate of a number, which is uh, <clears throat> basically you take the second term and you switch the sign of it. So the complex conjugate of a plus bi is a minus bi. And uh, so they talk about that there. And then when you're done reading the first step, you click continue on the bottom right corner and it'll show you the next step. So for, for our problem here, for the example they're giving us, <clears throat> The complex conjugate of 4 minus i means that you change the term of the, sorry, you change the sign of the second term. So instead of being 4 minus i, the second term is going to become 4 plus i. And they say that here. So they're actually describing that in words there. So now that we got that, we click continue. Here they actually write out the math for you, which is very nice. So you multiply the numerator and the denominator by the complex conjugate of the denominator. So multiplying the top and the bottom by the complex conjugate. And then uh, click continue, go to the next step. Well, on the top and the bottom, they went ahead and multiplied it out. On the top, they distributed the 10. And then on the bottom, they multiplied it out with FOIL. Um, and then uh, they actually described what they did. Here they say distribute 10 throughout the parentheses and use a minus bi times a plus bi, which is a squared plus b squared in the denominator. So detailed descriptions of these things. So if you need extra help, this is very helpful. Okay, and then <clears throat> finally they simplify the denominator. And um, so 4 squared is 16 plus 1 squared is 1. So that's going to be 16 plus 1 is 17. So they wrote out that step. And then clicking continue to see the last step. Uh, they went ahead and split this up into two fractions. So 40 over 17 plus 10 over 17 times i. Um, 
and you know you're done because on the bottom left it says question is complete. Now this is just a great resource. This is one of the reasons why we're using my math lab is it's just so helpful because even though it's not the exact same numbers we had, it's the same kind of problem as the one we just did. And uh, this showed us all the steps for a similar problem. And now if we've taken good notes, we've written this stuff down. Uh, you can always come back to this, by the way. You can reopen this window if you need to. Now you could go ahead and work through the problem <clears throat> here. So here we could go back to our original problem and we can multiply the top and the bottom by the complex conjugate um, <clears throat> and so forth. So that, that's actually uh, the one that I recommend the most is view an example. That's the one we just looked at. Uh, the other one that students like to use the most is help me solve this. Now the reason you use view an example is if you choose view an example, after you've viewed the example, you can go back and do the original problem that you had written down. Other students prefer help me solve this. The only problem with help me solve this is um, it's actually going to take you through all the steps with this problem, the actual problem it gave you. But then after that, it's going to give you a new problem to work on. So help me solve this can end up being a lot of extra work, but it still works very well. So for example, with this one, we did view an example. Let's say that wasn't enough. Um, well, let's try help, help me solve this. Help me solve this is going to take the original problem, which is uh, 6 over 3 minus i, and um, it's actually going to show us all the steps with the original problem that it gave us. So if I keep clicking continue here, uh, it helps you solve it in the sense that for the second step here, they're actually asking us, what is the complex conjugate of 3 minus i? And then it has a little box here that you can click on and type it in. <clears throat> so like we were saying, the complex conjugate means you change the sign of the second term, so the term involving i. So instead of 3 minus i, the complex conjugate is going to be 3 plus i. So I'll go ahead and type that in. So 3 plus i. And see, with help me solve this, it's actually going to go through all the steps. So now I click check answer. It says nice work, which means we got it. If it comes up green, that's good. It means you got it. Um, okay, and then you multiply the top and the bottom by the complex conjugate. Now they've already done that here for you. So they multiply the top and the bottom by 3 plus i. Okay, so I'll click continue. And then they list the next step, but they want us to fill in all these boxes. So here it says, distribute 6 throughout the parentheses in the numerator and use uh, a minus bi times a plus bi equals a squared plus b squared in the denominator. So what's that going to look like here? Well, uh, on the top, if we distribute the 6, we get 6 times 3 is 18. So I'll type in 18 on the top, and then 6 times positive i is going to be plus 6i. So on the top we're going to have 18 plus 6i. And then on the bottom, um, multiplying 3 minus i times 3 plus i is going to give us 3 squared. That's our a here. So a is 3. 3 squared plus b squared. So b squared is going to be uh, 1 actually. So we have 3 minus i times 3 plus i, so b is 1. That's 3 squared plus 1 squared. Okay, now that I've typed everything into the boxes, I click check answer. It says fantastic, so that means we're on, on track. And then we can see on the bottom, we can simplify. So <clears throat> 3 squared is 9, and 1 squared is 1. So 9 plus 1 is going to give us uh, 10 in the denominator. So I type in 10, I click check answer. And then it says, nice work, so good. And then finally, uh, just like in view an example, we can split this up into two fractions. So the first fraction is going to be 18 divided by 10. And if you can't do it in your head, you can always write it down on a sheet of paper um, as you're working on it or on a tablet. But anyway, 18 divided by 10 is obviously a common factor of 2, right? So if we divide the top and the bottom by 2, 18 divided by 10 divided by 2 is going to give us uh, 9 on the top and 5 on the bottom. So we're going to have 
press the fraction button and do nine fifths. So that's going to be our first fraction. And then for our second fraction, we're going to have uh, 6i over 10. And again, a common factor for 6 and 10 is 2. So dividing 6 over 10 by 2, we're going to get 6 divided by 2 is 3 on the top. We're going to have 3 on the top. And then on the bottom, 10 divided by 2 is 5. So we're going to have 3 fifths. And then, of course, don't forget the last thing here, which is going to be an i in front of the second term. So we got 9 fifths plus 3 fifths i. And you can always check this, write it down on your paper, uh, work it out, but um, this should be good because we divided everything by two. Okay, so I click check answer. Nice work. Okay, now I click close. Okay, now notice the only problem with this help me solve this is now we still have to do the entire problem on our own, but it's changed the numbers. So every time you do help me solve this, it will show you all the steps and guide you through all the steps with that problem, but you still aren't done with your homework problem. You have to do the homework problem here with different numbers. So now you would go ahead and go through all the steps with different numbers. So anyway, these are the, the two most useful tools in my math lab. And keep in mind that videos can be useful, particularly YouTube or sometimes the videos on my math lab. Uh, but they get mixed reviews. And then the textbook, of course, is useful if you read that. Uh, Ask My Instructor is usually not as useful. You, you generally want to contact me on uh, Canvas. Send me an email, uh, preferably to my Canvas inbox. And you can also print out your questions if you want to print them out and work them out on paper. A lot of people find that helpful. But of all these choices, probably the most useful one is View an Example, and then probably the second most useful if you have a lot of time on your hands, is doing help me solve this. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you found it helpful. And uh, I mean, it, this is a general video for all my courses, so not just for Math 2. This is going to work for any course that's using my Math Lab. Um, just keep in mind that not every single problem is going to have these buttons, help me solve this and view an example. But hopefully, there's enough of these on some of the harder questions that you're going to get the practice you need to succeed on the other questions as well.